Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter app development series where we are creating that wallpaper app which no one wants. So in the last video, we changed the look of category wallpapers by displaying the name of wallpapers and a button to save them as favorite. But right now, this button does not do anything. So in this video, I'll implement the logic which will make sure that this app remembers the wallpapers marked as favorite by users and display them on this third page. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, I'll get all the packages that we'll be needing in this video. First one is Hive. Hive is a database solution that I'll use to store the document IDs of wallpapers marked as favorite. Next one is Path Provider. This will help us to get the path to current app's document directory. It is needed to initialize Hive. And last one is Provider. This package helps with state management of apps and I'll be using it to pass around the list of document IDs of favorite wallpapers across widgets of our widget tree. Now that we have all the required dependencies, let's save this pubspec YAML so that pubget command starts. Okay, so now the very first thing I'll do is I'll go to the wallpaper model class located in wallpaper.dart file and in here I'll add two new fields. One will be to store the document ID as string and second one will be a boolean which will store if a wallpaper is marked as favorite or not. Then I initialize this dot ID with snapshot dot document ID and this dot favorite with false. And note that I haven't marked is favorite as final. This is because we want to be able to change the state of is favorite later. Next let's go to the main function in main dot dart file. Here, before we call run app, I want to set up Hive to be able to store document IDs of favorite wallpapers. First, I'll make sure that all the Flutter bindings are completely initialized before we start our app. For this, I'll write widgets flutter bindings dot ensure initialized. Next, I'll get the document directory of current app using get application document directory. This comes from the path provider package. And since this returns a future, I'll add await here to wait till we get the actual directory. Now I can call hive.init and pass in the part to this document directory. This will make sure that hive performs its initial setup in this directory. And to use await here, this main function will have to be marked async. Next I'll open a hive box using hive.open box. This method needs name of the box as string. Since we will need this name at multiple places, let's create a new file called constants.dart and define this name in that file. This will be a constant string called fav underscore box and its value will be favorites. We will need one more constant string to identify the actual list of document IDs in this box. I'll name this fav underscore list underscore key and its value will be list. And now in main.dart we can use these constants by importing constants.dart. Since hive.box open returns a future, I'll add await here and store the value in a variable called favbox. Once we have this box, I'll try to get the list of document IDs using favbox.get. Here, I'll pass in the fav list key. Now, when this app launches for the first time, this box will not have any list, which means return of this get call will be null. If that is the case, I'll use favbox.put to store an empty list at favlist key. This will make sure that when we try to get the list later in this app, we'll never get null. Now let's extract out this code in a separate function called init app. All the initial setup that our app needs should be done in this function. Next, let's start working on the provider of favorite wallpapers. For this, I'll create a new directory under lib called providers and in this folder I'll create a new file called fav underscore wallpaper underscore manager dot dart. In this file I'll create a new class called fav wallpaper manager which extends change notifier. Extending change notifier will allow us to send a notification to the widget tree whenever data of this class changes. So this class will have three methods add to fav, remove from fav and is favorite. All three of them will take a wallpaper object as input. Let's first implement is favorite because it is probably the easiest one. In this method, we just have to check if the list of document IDs stored in Hive contains the ID of given wallpaper. Contains method returns true only if it contains the given element. Next, in add to fav, 
first I'll get the list of document IDs from Hive. Note that here I'm using hive.box and not hive.openbox. Hive is designed such that it caches reference to boxes that are already open. So once we open a box in any tab function, we can quickly get a reference to it by calling hive.box. Once we have a reference to this box, I'll first make sure that it does not already have ID of given wallpaper. And only if it does not already have it, I'll add it to the list. And since we are modifying the list here, I'll also have to update it in Hive. For this, I'll again put the updated list in Hive at fav list key. Similar to add to fav, in remove from fav, I'll again get a reference to the list from Hive. And then I'll call list.remove passing in wallpaper id. Remove method returns a boolean to indicate if something was actually removed from the list. So I'll use that in this if check. And inside this if block, I'll update hive with modified list. This will make sure that we call put only if something was actually removed. And now we can call the notify listeners method that we get from change notifier in add to fav and remove from fav. This completes the fav wallpaper manager class. Now before going any further, let's stop and relaunch this app once. This will make sure that it executes all the new code that we have added in any tab function. Okay. Now let's start using the fav wallpaper manager. For that, I'll go to the build method of my homepage state class. Here, I'll wrap this value listenable builder with a change notifier provider. This comes from the provider package. Change notifier provider needs a create callback. Using this callback, I'll return a new instance of fav wallpaper manager. This will make sure that we can access this instance of fav wallpaper manager from anywhere in the widget tree below this widget. Now let's see how to do that. If I scroll down a little, you can see that we have this stream builder code. And here we create a list of wallpapers from document snapshots. Right now all wallpapers in this list have their is favorite field set to false. So let's add some code to check if any of the wallpaper have their document ID in the list stored in Hive. For that, first I'll get a reference to fav wallpaper manager. This can be done by calling provider.offcontext. And to get provider of type fav wallpaper manager, I'll specify fav wallpaper manager as template argument to off. Next, I'll move this wallpaper dot from document snapshot out and store it in a variable called wallpaper. Then I'll pass this wallpaper variable to wallpaper list dot add. Now before we add the wallpaper to wallpaper list, I'll add a if block which will check if current wallpaper is marked as favorite. For this I'll write fav wallpaper manager dot is favorite. If this is true, I'll set wallpaper dot is favorite as true. So this will make sure that all the wallpapers that users have marked as favorite have their is favorite field set to true. Then next, let's go to the category underscore wallpapers dot dart file. We have a similar code here in get wallpapers of current category method. So I'll repeat the same thing here too. First, get a reference to fav wallpaper manager using provider dot off on current context. Then before we add this wallpaper to the list, I'll check if it is marked as favorite. And if it is, I'll change wallpaper.isFavorite to true. And now in the on pressed callback of icon button that shows the favorite icon, I can write code to actually add or remove wallpapers from favorite list. For that, I'll first check if wallpaper at current index is favorite or not. If it is favorite, we'll have to remove it from the list. And if it is not, then we'll have to add it to the list. But to add or remove, first we need to get a reference to fav wallpaper manager. In the builder of list view builder, before returning the list style, I'll get a reference to fav wallpaper manager using provider.off. Once we have this, we can go back to the on pressed and write fav wallpaper manager dot add to fav by passing in the wallpaper at current index. And in the else part, I'll call fav wallpaper manager dot remove from fav. And after this if else block, I'll just flip the value of is favorite for current wallpaper, which means if it was true, it will become false, and if it was false, it will become true. 
I'll also add code in the icon property of this icon button to check if current wallpaper is favorite. If that is true, then I'll show the normal favorite icon. Else, I'll show the favorite icon with just the borders. Let's also set the color property of this icon to red. Now let's test this by tapping on the icon button. It is working but it seems to be working a little weird. But anyways, let's now go to fav.dart file and write code to display wallpapers marked as favorite. I would like to display a list similar to what we see in category underscore wallpapers. So I'll just copy this whole list view builder code and paste it in build method of favorite state class. Now to display the favorite wallpapers here, we'll first have to filter the wallpaper list that we get in favorite class and then create a new list of wallpaper that are marked as favorite. This can be done just before returning list view builder from this build method. For this, I'll write widget.wallpaperList.where. Let's replace element with wallpaper. And in the where method, I'll return wallpaper.isFavorite. I'll store the return of this call in a variable called favwallpapers. And let's also call .toList on this so that we get a list instead of an iterable object. And since the list view builder code that we just copied uses wallpapers everywhere, I'll rename fav wallpapers to wallpapers. Now I just have to import the correct files for fav wallpaper manager, provider, wallpaper gallery and cache network image. Okay, so I had to make a cut in the video here because I made a minor mistake in category underscore wallpapers dot dart. And it took me some time to find out the problem. So. In the on press of icon button, I wrote add to fav and remove from fav in exactly opposite blocks. So let's fix that real quick. If current wallpaper is favorite, then we have to remove it and if it is not favorite, then we'll have to add it. And since we copied the same code to fav.diet, I'll have to correct it there too. Now let's save this code and test it. So I'll go to abstract category and mark some wallpapers as favorite. And if I go to favorites page now, you can see that those wallpapers now appear here too. And if I click on favorite button here, it will get removed from this page. This is working great. But right now we only have option to mark wallpapers as favorite from category underscore wallpapers. If a user is looking at a wallpaper from all images page, they don't have any option to save current wallpaper as favorite. So let's try to add one more button along with download button and apply button which will allow marking a wallpaper as favorite. For that I'll go to wallpaper underscore gallery dot dart file. Here I'll add a new icon button in between the existing two icon buttons. Let's set the icon for this as icons dot favorite underscore border and leave the on pressed empty. If I save this, I'll get an overflow error because the width of this container is too small to hold 3 buttons. So I'll change the width to 200. Now all the buttons are visible but it looks like they are offset to left. To fix this, I'll set the max axis alignment to max axis alignment dot space between. This will put empty spaces in between these 3 buttons. Let's also set the color of this icon as red. Now in the on press, I'll again have to check if current wallpaper is already marked as favorite or not. But the thing is, here we don't have an index. We'll have to get the current index from photo view gallery widget. So I'll create a new state variable called current index. And then in init state, I'll set its value to widget.initial page. And then in on press callback, I can replace index with current index. Now to call add to fav and remove from fav, we again need fav wallpaper manager. So I'll again get it using provider.off context. And I'll need to import correct files for fav wallpaper manager and provider. Now in the on press, if current wallpaper is already marked as favorite, then I'll call fav wallpaper manager dot remove from fav passing in current wallpaper. Else, I'll call fav wallpaper manager dot add to fav. And at the end, I'll flip the value of is favorite for current wallpaper. There are multiple places where I have used page controller dot page to get the current index. 
we can now replace all that with current index variable now we just have to make sure that current index always has the latest and correct value for that i'll use the on page changed callback of photo view gallery widget this gets called every time the page changes and the current page number is passed in as argument so inside this i'll just set current index to input index and this obviously needs to be inside a set state call so now let's save and test this if i open any wallpaper and click on the middle button uh, nothing happens because i forgot to write code to change icon for this icon button depending on wallpaper dot is favorite so let's do that real quick and now if i save and test this you can see that the icon changes when i mark any wallpaper as favorite and it also gets added to the favorites page and this brings us to the end of this video in the next video i'll probably work on making the theme mode of this app persistent so make sure you check that out anyways if you like this video hit that like button and maybe also consider subscribing for more such content i'll hope to see you in the next one